The world stops turning trigger dementia. My hair is no longer the wavy, long locks I used to toss back when I danced to every beat, letting it tangle in the wind as I owned the world. Now it's short, cropped out of practicality, but tonight it doesn't matter. I'm swaying under the soft lights in my living room, the one safe space I still own, as my wife Anna watches me from the couch. Dance with me, I call, flashing a smile, teasing her as the music swells with old school funk. My hips twist, arms outstretched, inviting her to join me. I am carefree, still the wild soul she fell for 10 years ago. Or at least that's what I want her to believe. Anna shakes her head, amused, her gaze soft. She's beautiful as ever. The same raven-haired woman I first saw at a bookstore. Her face buried in a novel I still don't understand. She stands, albeit slowly, and takes my hand. You're too much, Ellie. She laughs, her voice like a calming tide. I pull her into a spin, even though we both know neither of us can keep up the pace like we used to. We sway together in our bubble, bodies close, the familiar scent of her lavender soap wrapping around me like a safety net. For a few moments, I'm just Ellie, dancing with my love, ignoring the ticking of the clock. But then my hand stumbles on something, something familiar and foreign at the same time. I freeze, my fingers grazing her wrist. It's too thin, too fragile, and I realize I don't know when that happened. My heart pounds, but I push the panic away and pull her tighter, my face buried in her shoulder. Ellie, Anna whispers, her hands resting on my back. You're trembling. I can't tell her. I don't know how to say it. I don't know how to tell her that it's happening again. My mother had it. I remember the way her mind slipped away in pieces, the way she forgot who I was before she forgot herself. I felt it months ago, misplacing my keys, fumbling over a simple conversation. But now, now it's real. My fingers press into Anna's skin, trying to ground myself. Just hold me. I manage to choke out, and she does. She always does. The music shifts, mellowing into something slower. Anna pulls back, just enough to see my face, her thumb brushing my cheek. What's going on, Ellie? Her eyes full of concern search mine. I want to lie, but there's no point. She knows. She always knows. I, I can't remember. It's the simplest way to say it, the only way I can get it out without collapsing. Things. Important things. The way to the store. What I had for breakfast. My voice cracks and I bite my lip trying to steady myself. I'm scared. Anna's face tightens, but she doesn't flinch. Instead, she cups my face and presses her forehead to mine. We'll figure it out. Whatever it is, we'll face it together. I promise. I want to believe her. God, I want to. But as we stand there, swaying to the music, all I can feel is time slipping through my fingers, and there's no stopping it. The weeks blur together. Doctor's appointments, tests, more tests. Each day feels like it's happening to someone else. Anna stays strong, but I can see the cracks forming around her eyes. The late nights where she thinks I'm asleep, but I can hear her crying in the bathroom. Dementia. That's the word they give it. The monster lurking in my brain stealing bits of me every day. I'm 43. Too young, they say. Too young for this. But here we are. Hey, Anna says one night, sliding onto the couch beside me, a photo album in her hands. I found this. Thought we could look through it together. She opens it and there we are. Our wedding day, her in that stunning white dress, me fumbling with the ring because my hands wouldn't stop shaking. I laugh, but it's hollow. We were such babies, I say. We still are, Anna replies, her fingers tracing the outline of our smiles. But as we flip through the pages, I realize something terrifying. I don't remember some of these moments. There's a photo of us on a trip to Paris standing in front of the Eiffel Tower, 
and it's like I'm seeing it for the first time. When was this? I ask, trying to keep the panic out of my voice. Anna's smile falters. Ellie, you don't remember Paris? I shake my head, my heart pounding. She places the album aside and takes my hands in hers, squeezing tight. It's okay. It's going to happen. But we'll make new memories, okay? We still have time. But time is the enemy. It's always been the enemy. Months pass. I've started writing things down. Little notes about my day, things I want to remember, things I'm afraid I'll forget. Anna finds them sometimes scattered across the house and she just smiles sadly. One night I wake up in a panic. I don't know where I am. The room feels foreign, the shadows on the walls menacing. I sit up trying to breathe and then Anna's arms are around me holding me close. It's okay, she whispers, her voice steady despite the storm I know is raging inside her. You're home, you're safe. I cling to her like a lifeline, my head buried in her chest. I'm losing myself, I whisper. No, she says fiercely. You're not. I won't let you. But we both know she can't stop it. The world keeps turning, even as mine falls apart. But there are still moments, brief, fleeting moments, where I remember who I am, who we are. Anna and I still dance, even though I forget the steps. We still laugh, even when I don't understand the joke. And every night, she holds me, whispering promises that she'll stay by my side, no matter what. In those moments, I believe her. And for now, that's enough. Because love is stronger than any disease, stronger than fear, stronger than the fading memories. And as long as I have her, I'm not lost yet.